Hello and welcome to a presentation of offshore wire rope inspection. Magnetic wire rope testing, or MRT equipment, is often used in a corrosive offshore environment with an abundance of salt and sulfur compounds that are carried away by sea spray, mist, fog, and prevailing winds. Deposition of tiny droplets and splashes of salt water are the most corrosive hazard to MRT equipment, especially in a marine environment. The best solution is to simply use MRT equipment that has been designed to work in such an environment with an ingress protection rating of IP65, which is for protection against heavy seas or strong jets of water, or IP67 or IP68, which will provide protection against immersion in water. This ensures full use of MRT equipment without having to worry about taking many special precautions to avoid the damage that salt water can cause. All of our latest generation sensor heads are designed and built with an ingress protection rating of IP67 or 68, which is again protection against immersion in water. This presentation presents experiments to demonstrate this protection rating. When we look at high value offshore wire ropes, such as subsea construction ropes or mooring ropes, these are expensive, frequently in the seven figures, have large diameters, typically over 100 millimeters and have lengths in excess of 2,000 meters or 2 kilometers. MRT inspection logistics usually require the rope to be deployed and retrieved into and from seawater. Since the rope must move through the sensor head, it needs to be appropriately protected. The following slides illustrate logistics problems associated with the inspection of long offshore ropes. For the inspection of long ropes, there are some alternatives. First, mobilize a secondary storage winch to transpool the rope on deck. This is risky and often impossible. Second, you could take the vessel to a deep water location, deploy and retrieve the rope to and from the seabed to perform the MRT inspection. This is less risky, but there are some consequences. First, the rope is immersed in the seawater, thus resulting in the sensor head getting wet. The meaning for this is you need to have a sensor head that must be splash proof which has a rating of IP65 or IP67. So the typical problem is rope deployment for the inspection. These pictures illustrate early attempts at deploying long ropes with a tugboat for inspection. Please note that MRT equipment from NDT Technologies is used as highlighted by the lower red arrow. The upper red arrow is for the tugboat. The following slides will show a typical offshore MRT operation. First, you'll have to take your vessel to a deep sea location. Next, you'll have to deploy the rope for MRT inspection. Third, you'll have to retrieve the rope for MRT inspection. Notice that this results in the MRT sensor head getting wet. When the inspection is complete, you then have to return to port. A typical continuous rope monitoring system, or CRMS, follows a similar procedure. Here is an example of a subsea crane CRMS inspection. Notice there is your storage winch on the left. Next, your traction winch, which may have heave compensation. So here is our NDT Technologies sensor head, shown in yellow with the signal electronics on top, a rotary encoder attached to the traction winch, with feedback going into our signal electronics, and to a computer for display purposes. You run your MRT inspection during deployment. We'll now do a quick overview of ingress protection, IP rating 67 or 68. Here is a typical IP rating chart where the first number shows a protection against the entry of dust, and the second number shows a protection against temporary immersion. A variety of MRT sensor heads available on the market have an insufficient ingress protection. In the following example, you will notice unprotected connectors. This competitor requires a multitude of sensor inserts with connectors that are unprotected to the IP67 environment. As seen in this video, this sensor head comes with countless pairs of sensors and metal liners. These sensors contain connectors which are not protected from an IP67 environment. 
Additionally, this particular sensor must be positioned very close to the rope surface. In many cases, this is not possible. For example, grease, marine growth, or plastic sheathing can prevent positioning of the sensor close to the rope. We'll now do a demonstration experiment highlighting our ingress protection rating of IP67. For this experiment, we'll use our LMA125 sensor head, which is applicable for ropes with a diameter between 0 and 32 millimeters. What we got set up over here is our uh, LMA125 sensor head connected to a uh, rope view softer and an elapsed timer meter with a water vessel. We're going to attempt to demonstrate the ability of our sensor head to operate underwater. Um, hopefully you can see this on the screen. We have our distance counter wheel which uh, gets displayed on the screen here as the wheel moves. Um, we also have the LMA and LF signals as we enter a calibration rod. You can see the LMA trace and the LF trace pick up our calibration rod. I'm now going to dunk our sensor head in the water tank and uh, repeat that so we can see that it still operates while it's underwater. Give the uh, distance counter wheel here a turn by hand and I can see that it is indicating in the forward direction. I'm going to stop it, go back the other way and you can see the screen display in reverse. Grab our calibration rod, do the same thing, insert it through our sensor head and we can see on the screen that we certainly have an LMA and an LF trace as we did before. I'm going to start the a timer here on this other computer and come back in about a half an hour check on it to see that it's still working for us. Okay, so we are back after our sensor head's been submerged in the water for about a half an hour. We'll uh, go ahead and check the uh, distance counter wheel again. And, yep, still working. In reverse. And then in the forward direction. We'll go ahead and insert our calibration rod again. Sure enough, LMA, LF, still working. Let me try to zoom the camera in on the PC again. Repeat this. you guys can see the signals here. So again, distance counter wheel in the forward direction, then in the reverse. And if we insert our calibration rod, we pick up our LMA and LF just as we did with the sensor head out of the water. <clears throat> Go ahead and get this thing out now. And just one more quick check. We'll now provide a more detailed explanation of how we achieve this IP67 rating. So let's take a quick look at what exactly about our sensor head makes it waterproof. Let's start by look, taking a look at the distance counter wheel.
So as you can see here, the wheel is simply a piece of polyurethane. And the way we indicate speed and distance is we have a set of 14 magnets that is embedded in the wheel and then siliconed into place. There's absolutely no wires, no electricity, nothing here that can be damaged by being submerged underwater. The second part of the sensor head, if we take a look underneath our rope guides here, is that there's absolutely no exposed wiring, no electrical connections, water cannot get inside. All the connections are done up here, underneath this cover. The connections are completely submerged in RTV, and there's, there's simply no opportunity for water to, to cause any type of damage. In addition to the video you just saw, we'd also like to point out that our sensor heads use no external power and that only very low voltages and currents are required for signal and distance counter signal generation. Also, the distance counter is not easily clogged up by grease and can be easily cleaned. Furthermore, all signal amplitudes are inherently speed independent and do not require a distance counter signal to make the LF signal speed independent. Our sensor heads are extremely sturdy. They use only passive components like permanent magnets and coils of copper wire. All signals such as LMA, LF, and distance counter signals together with the small amounts of energy required are generated or harvested from the moving rope through electromagnetic induction. We like to refer to this as both signal and energy harvesting. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions on any of this material, please reach out using the contact information below. Thank you.